I was a meth addicted, well, drug addicted person. I was completely lost. Um, and it was the generosity of, of a man that, that showed me, and that's part of why I wanted to do that, was that it was the generosity of someone showing me the love of Jesus through their giving at a time in my life that it impacted me. It impacted me so much that I, I sought after Jesus. I wanted to know who this, who this Jesus was that gave this man the heart to do what he did for me. Um, you know, I spent almost 20 years addicted to drugs. Um, and I've been on the streets, and I've, I've lived in a car, I've lived on the street, and I know what it is to shiver in the cold and have no one and nothing. And uh, God, God delivered me from that. And I, I just, I want to help show others the love of Christ. And I, I hope that that's your guys' heart as well. Um, you know, there's, there's so much need out there, and there's so many people that are just, I was, I was so lost. I mean, my idea of God was... My pastor actually, he wanted to talk to me beforehand. He asked me about what my idea of God was. And he was so dumbfounded by the time I was done explaining to him my idea of God, his jaw was on the floor. And he spent the better part of seven, eight years teaching me the truth and discipling me. And I thank God for that man. And uh, he passed away, but now I'm here. Pastor, you, you saw me when I walked in this building. Um, I wasn't lost, I was just wandering badly. And it hasn't been that long, but I'm standing on the stage today. When I was lost again, because I, I, I went back to drugs after knowing the truth, and uh, I thought for sure I was gonna die and go to hell. But I came here and Pastors have been mentoring me. Some men here in the church have been loving me into the church. And uh, I'm here to say I'm, I'm clean. I'm sober. So for that, I'm eternally grateful to my God, to Jesus, to all of you. And um, let's keep doing that for as many people as possible. Thank you, Travis. Uh, so, I don't know, about three years ago, Pastor and I, uh, when we first came, uh, we had a visitor, and it, it was on, actually, it was almost three years ago to the date, uh, because it was my birthday, and I remember we had a 60s, the church had a 60s party for me, and so I didn't know Pastor had, uh, she had a wig, a giant afro in her purse, and she had these large bell-bottom pants, and she had a like a go-go dress and a go-go boots, and I had no idea. I came in, and uh, the church had a surprise party for me for my 60th birthday, and we had a visitor that day, and you know how embarrassed I was. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. I thought, the guy sat back there, and I thought, that guy's never coming back. <laughs> because I said, hey, I can't wear this to preach. And they said, I said, they said, you know, Pastor, that's what you're wearing today. Well, anyway, that brother's name was Michael Dennelly. And, uh, and he told me about his friend Travis. He said he was his BFF who was out there. And tell me with tears in his eyes, Pastor, we gotta pray for Travis. Travis is gonna walk through those doors someday. Pray for Travis. I thank God for Mike, if you're looking in, man, you believed God for your, your brother and your friend. You know, when, listen, <laughs> Travis was just a prayer request at one time, but look at him now. Yeah. 
And you know, I just want to share, you know, I remember I was a prayer request. I've shared with some of y'all my story when I was out crazy on the streets. I know that some of you have people who their prayer, they are your prayer requests right now. I know that. It breaks my heart. You know, how the enemy works and, 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 and comes and moves and, and takes our loved one. It seems like it looks like they belong to him. But look, they don't. Don't buy into that lie because what's happening is not necessarily what's going on. God is doing more in the invisible realm than what you can see in the physical realm. Oh, if you had seen me 40 years ago, you would have been scared, hiding your purse, and moving to the side. And I am not exaggerating. That's the toned down version. We serve a miracle working God. You know, in recovery at CR, we always say, hey, don't, don't stop coming until the miracle happens. To you who are praying for your unsaved loved ones and children who are out there not doing well, your grandchildren, don't stop praying till the miracle happens. You imagine them sitting right there next to you just like we imagine Michael and I, Travis, coming through those doors. The thing is, I didn't know what Travis looked like. He'd been coming for a bit, you know. Before I wreck, oh, that's Travis. And I, I received that charge from you that we keep loving, we keep reaching out, we keep giving. You know, yesterday y'all went out. It was beautiful. They went out, passed out some food, jackets, turkey, gloves. Amazing. And you know what? I could just sense Jesus saying, I can work with that. Right? I love it. I'm going to be sharing that line somebody shared with us recently. says, you know what? I love the life church because people come back to life there. Let's give God a hand of praise. All right. Oh, my daughter's here today. If those of y'all haven't met Hannah, you want to say hello to everybody, Hannah? That's my daughter. Come on up here for a second, boo. Come on up. Say hello. She comes up from L.A. every once in a while, helps us with a couple of projects. How are you, sweetie? I'm good. I came to take my dad out for his birthday yesterday. <laughs> but I'm happy to be here. <laughs> All, right. All right. Are you taking me out today, too? Maybe. Maybe. All right. All right. All right. All right. Happy birthday. Oh my goodness. Oh, come on now. <laughs> well, I'm feeling that. Oh. <laughs> Leave it to chap. Oh my goodness. Happy birthday, dear Tammy. Happy birthday to Oh, Tammy's birthday. Today. Happy 
Happy birthday, Tammy. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Wow. Come on, sing it again. No, I just playing. You know, you know, you don't get me started. Thank you. That was pretty cool. Uh, you know, this is my 40th Thanksgiving weekend church. And I was sharing with the group next door before we came in. It, it, you know, some of them are really hard. For some reason, you know, I've had some really difficult times during this season over the years. Uh, and the pastor and I have a heart for those of you who are in recovery, for those of you who are, have lost loved ones. Who the Holidays aren't great for everybody. Don't get it twisted. No, I've had some change. This has been a great, great year for me. Uh, but this is where you, we really need to be God's heart to people. Don't let anyone fall through the cracks. Amen. Don't take anything for granted. Text somebody. Pick up the telephone. Whisper their name. Whisper their name into God's ear in prayer. These are very difficult times for some people. But for the people of God, this is an excellent opportunity to see God's gifts manifested through your lives as you encourage one another, pray for one another, give to one another, do the kind of things that God says, man, I can work with these things. You know, and, and Holy Spirit may be speaking to you and putting a name in your heart right now. You know, do something with that. That's what ministry is. We've been talking about that in Purpose Driven. We went through ministry. It's just letting, opening up to God and, and, and whatever he asks you to do, sometimes that's just smiling. Sometimes that's a note, a letter. You know, sometimes that's a prayer. You know? And so if you remember anybody, you look around, it may be a shut-in, it may be somebody who's not here, someone that's sick, someone that, reach out and be a blessing to somebody. In the name of the Lord. Can I hear an amen? amen? All right, here we go. I am in Luke chapter 17. I'm going to start reading at verse number 11. And then we're going to pray. I'm going to read 11 through 13. The Bible says that Jesus traveled on toward Jerusalem and passed through the border region between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered one village, 10 men approached him. How many men? Ten. How many? Ten. 10 men approached him. But they kept their distance. What did they do? They kept their distance. For they were lepers. They shouted to him, Mighty Lord, our wonderful master, won't you have mercy on us and heal us? Let's pray. Father, pray with me. Father, Father. speak to my heart. Change my, Change my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Boy, I, uh, I, I, this story, I'm just going to kind of walk through and share a couple of points. And we're probably going to have a little time of worship at the end and giving thanks to God. But there's a couple of things that I want to. I want to point out this morning in this story. I'm going to read a little bit more of it in a little bit. But the first thing that I'd like to point out, and uh, Jesus is about ready to do a miracle, all right? We're going to see the miracle together. But I want you to notice that the scripture says, Luke who wrote this, he said, Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. Say, on his way. I really want you to get this, church, before I move any further, that 
So much of the work that Jesus did when it came to miracles, when it came to loving on people, when it came to serving was on the way. Say on the way. It wasn't in a church house. It wasn't in a synagogue. It wasn't in a classroom. It wasn't at a, a, a conference. No, it, it was on the way somewhere. He was just doing God's work, sharing, living life. And a lot of the work that God wants to do through you and in you is not going to happen in this house. It's going to happen as we're on the way. On the way to work. On the way to the coffee pot. On the way to the store. On the way to pump some gas. Say, on the way. On the way. That's where it happens. On the way. So it says that he was on the way. Uh, they were leopard, it says. And then uh, they shouted to him, Mighty Lord, our wonderful master, won't you have mercy on us and heal us? The little piece I want you to watch right here in verse number 12, it says they kept their distance. Say they kept their distance. Other versions say they followed from afar. All right? They kept their distance. They followed from afar. Why? Because they were lepers. Why? Because they had a label. Why? Because society did not want them around. Why? Because they were contagious. And as I was praying this morning, I had this message all set up, and this story, I just wanted to have a conversation with y'all this morning. Holy Spirit showed me that there would be people in the house today or watching me live stream that you are following the Lord from a distance. You're following the Lord. From a distance. Why? You know what leprosy was? It was a skin disease. And people with that disease, they would lose fingers and they would lose skin and they would lose... They looked to the eye unpleasant. They smelled. Their skin was rotten. And the religious people of the time and the Bible and Leviticus called them unclean. They could not be with their family. They could not be with their friends. They could not even go into church and worship. They were unclean. They found churches in, uh, in Europe that had these windows, Pastor. Uh, they were called lepers' windows in the churches. Little skinny, tall windows because the lepers couldn't come in, but they got to peek from outside. There's a lot of stories in the Bible about lepers because in that culture... All right, the Jewish culture we're talking about. The people knew that the leprosy or felt the leprosy was more than just a skin disease, but was a curse from God to people who had deeper sins in their lives. Have you ever had a sin in your life? Just one. And the Lord showed me that there are some would be here either watching or in this house. You are following the Lord from afar because of a sin in your life. And you feel shame. And you feel guilt. 
you feel, how could I get close to Jesus? Like the lepers, they had to, it was by law, had to say unclean, unclean wherever they went. And you've heard those words. Unclean. Unclean. The Lord promises in that book of Isaiah, the first chapter, he says, though your sins be as red as scarlet, I'll wash them white as snow. The Bible says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You love Jesus, you're not a leper. You may have areas in your life where you need a touch of the Holy Spirit. You need to be covered by his blood, but he loves you up close. How do I know? Because that's the message of the gospel. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. That's the message of the gospel. Jesus invades your world. He's up close and personal. And we are not designed to follow him from afar because when we are afar, we get ourselves into trouble. Can I hear an amen? amen. Let's get up and personal. Let's get where he's at. There's room at the cross for everybody. You can be white as snow today. In Bible times, people suffering from the skin disease of leprosy were treated as outcasts. There's no cure for the disease which gradually left a person disfigured through loss of fingers, toes, eventually limbs. Leprosy sufferers had to leave their homes and families and live together with other sufferers on the outskirts of the town and they would have to scavenge food. They were forbidden to have any contact with people who did not have the disease and they had to ring a bell and shout unclean, unclean, unclean if anyone approached them. They could not go to the marketplace and were forbidden to take part in worship. In the Bible, the word leprosy is mentioned upwards of 40 times depending on the Bible version you use. Leprosy was common in the Bible times. And many references to it were all understood by those who lived in unsanitary conditions. The main reason why leprosy is talked about so much in the Bible is that it's a graphic illustration of sin's destructive power. In ancient Israel, leprosy was a powerful object lesson of the debilitating influence of sin in a person's life. Sin separates us from God, just like it separated the lepers from society, from the things and the people they love. You know, people, there was the theory of evolution, how the world has become better. No. No. There was a time when man walked with God like this, closely and connected. Through one man, Adam, sin entered the world, broke that connection. And as the connection, guys, they, a man did more and more of his own thing, they became further and further and further and further and further and further separated from God. That's not evolution, that's devolution. It's the other direction. And how many of y'all would say that the world is a whole lot more corrupt than it was when you were growing up as a child? It just gets worse. It doesn't get better. But Jesus Christ, he came to bridge the gap. 
See, the world entered sin through the first Adam, entered in and had to leave through the second Adam. We call him Jesus Christ because there was no righteous person. It came through an unrighteous person, Adam. It had to leave through an, a righteous one. There was none, so Jesus became one. That's Bible. That's why we are who we are today because someone died for us. Someone did for us what we could not do for ourselves. That's reason to give thanks today. Right? So, sin separates us from God. And Leviticus 13 and 46 says about the leper, it says, as long as the serious disease lasts, they will be ceremonially unclean and they must live in isolation in their place outside the camp. Listen to me, and I want everybody watching me. God did not create you for isolation. Listen to me, you who are watching me at home. God did not create you for isolation. You were created for connection and community. We know the devil goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. You know who's it, who his prey is as a lion? He goes after the weak one that's limping by himself in the back. There's no need to limp anymore. Today is the day of salvation for some of you. Amen. Come on, if you're going to clap, clap, right? So that's why the lepers were following Jesus from a distance. And some of you today, you may have come into the house like the lepers thinking unclean, unclean. You know what I hear? What? You know what I hear? I hear different. This is what I hear. I hear instead of unclean, unclean, I'm clean, I'm clean. Whoa! This is for some of you who have outside you look the same as everybody else. Leprosy was on the outside. It was a skin disease. But sin is dark. It's inside. You can't see it. But it's deadly. Oh, that all of us would leave it. I'm clean. I'm clean. I should have brought me a cowbell today. <laughs> next time. Next year, maybe. I'm clean. I'm clean. I'm clean. I'm clean. Isaiah 1 and 18 says, come now. Let's settle this, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, I'll make them as white as snow. Though they're red like crimson, I'll make them as white as wool. Back to the story. I haven't forgot. <laughs> Verse 14 says, when Jesus stopped to look at them, I gotta stop there for a second. Another point I wanna bring out in this story. Jesus will always stop for you. That's what he did this morning. Those of you who may not be kind of custom, and maybe this, we saw the gifts in operation this morning. It's what God does to edify and to build up his church. He used the pastor today with a, with a word, a prophetic word. You're here, you're this, you feel like someone's missing in your life. You feel like, you know what Jesus just said? He stopped everything. That wasn't scripted, that wasn't planned, no. He says, hey, whoop, shut everything else down, pastors. There's somebody over there I want to talk to.
that somebody I, I want you to pray for. And so they're crying out. I don't know if you've ever called somebody and got that feeling they're busy. I've heard that, oh, Pastor, I'm sorry. I know you're busy. I'm not busy. I am engaged with life, but I'm not busy to stop. And neither is Jesus. His spirit is inside of us. And what I want to say to you is you can come to Jesus. And you could call out and you can cry out to Jesus. And he'll stop. Says Jesus stopped. For what? To look at them. Oh my goodness. Have you ever just walked by somebody and not looked at them? They're asking you for something. Oh man. He stopped preaching and took to meddling this morning. <laughs> And Jesus won't do that. I've shared the story with you about my Titi Chefeng. She has so many issues in her life. She was like in her 70s, almost 80. She got saved when she was 78 at my church. And I used to tell her, well, Titi, you need to call on the Lord. Tiene que clamar, tiene que llamar al Señor. You got to call on him. And she would say, yo lo llamo y él no contesta. You say, I call him, but he don't answer. Yo lo llamo y él no contesta. I say, well, Titi, you must have the wrong number. <laughs> I'm glad she found that right number, man, in the old age, almost 80 years old, when she came and gave her life to Jesus. He stopped. And he spoke these words. Go to be examined by the Jewish priests. All right? If a leper was cleansed in that culture, they had to have like a certificate, like an I'm clean certificate. And the only place they could get it was from the priests. So they had to go and like a certification inspection. Right? So Jesus said, these are, these are people, uh, we, we don't know how many of them were Samaritans, but apparently most of them were Jews. And so they knew what they had to do. They were lepers. They knew the law. If they were religious, they were Jews. So as Jesus spoke, what's really cool here is uh, go and examine. It says, they set off. They went ahead and went. This morning, I don't know if you noticed uh, when pastor spoke, it was, there was some resistance. Nobody wanted to move. Now that resistance doesn't come from the Spirit of God. All right? After he speaks, he wants you to move. He wants you to get on the way. You know, hey, listen, I've been at these... Back in the day, we used to sing a song. Uh, it used to say... I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Any of y'all remember that song? Right? Oh, I'm giving my age with an old Pentecost, Assembly of God, back in the day. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Right? And what's interesting is we were singing all of those songs that said, I surrender, I surrender, I surrender, I surrender. Right before God spoke. Right? Yeah, I'm gonna, I just, Holy Spirit just showed me that. Well, some of us even had our hands raised up. I surrender, I surrender, and God was speaking, and when he spoke, whoop, whoop. Then it became, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. <laughs> now, church, I love you. As your pastor, your spiritual coach, your friend. Don't miss those opportunities. I've missed some over my life. I remember one time, I'm going to go ahead and tell on myself. I was young in the ministry. I was working with Teen Challenge. I might have been working for a year or two. And I would never, ever answer the altar calls. Never. I just wouldn't do it. Because I didn't want the guys in the program to think that I had sin in my life. 
I'm babe, you know, pretty much immature. Maybe pride, maybe, you know, I'm talking almost 40 years ago when I got started in this. I was a young man. I just, they put me to work right away. I just got out of the program and I, they hired me as staff and, but I wouldn't go up. I was like, I don't want them to think I have sin in my life. No, you know what? Now I tell my story. They say, people, Pastor Henry, how could you do that? How could you tell the people? I want you to know that I'm a person just like you that struggles every day with a lot of the same issues that you have. Only thing about I got gifts, I got talents, I've got calling, I've got a position, but I'm a human being just like you. I've got to come to the cross, I've got to confess my sins, I've got to do the same thing. There's nothing special about Pastor Henry. I'm Henry at home, huh, ma? You know, she says she didn't marry Pastor Henry, she just married Henry. But I wouldn't go up. You know, I wouldn't. So after a couple of years, I'm up at a Camp Pinecrest, which is up by Lake Arrowhead. That was the Assembly of God camp. We're up there. And they had a spiritual emphasis. And they, uh, at the end of the service, it was uh, like the third day of the service. We were up there. It was amazing. The thing was great. And finally, I felt the conviction I had felt all along, but I resisted. I'm one of those who would sing, I surrender, I surrender. I shall not be moved. It's like bipolar, you know. <laughs> and so when they called, they made the call, altar call up. Travis, thank you for sharing your story, man. And they made the altar call. I got up to the front, and I got down on my knees. Bam! Holy Spirit. All over me, man. I'm like. For those of y'all, listen, I don't want to scare any of y'all, you know. It's, I mean, Pastor Henry is like a holy roller swinging from chandeliers, Alleluia. You know, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Listen, I always say, don't be scared that God's going to turn you into a freak. Jesus freak. I always say, listen, a God doesn't take people and turn them into freaks. He takes freaks and turns them into people. Right? Don't be scared. Stay open. I surrender. Right? So what happens? Let me get you back on the carpet. I'm down, and man, I'm just sensing God, man, waves and waves and waves and waves and waves and waves. I start crying. All my muckles start coming out. It was one of those experiences. I'm up on the front, muckles coming out. And I'm, Lord, let me up. Let me up, Lord. I'm so, now I'm my head in the flesh. I'm thinking, everybody's going to think I'm a sinner. What are people going to think? And I sense Holy Spirit say, I ain't getting you up. Who knows when's the next time I get you down here? <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, you know, when God moves on you, take advantage of those. Same as when God puts it in your heart to give, reach out, to hug somebody, to share a good word, to send a text. That's Holy Spirit. We are spirit people. That's how God speaks to us, through promptings of Holy Spirit, through the word. You know? so don't leave here, you know, don't. Take advantage, the Bible says, of every opportunity. But the days are evil. Back out there, it's st the world stays the same. What The change in the world comes through you. What happens inside of you, you get to take with you. All right. So he spoke these words, go and be examined, and they set off. I love it because this is what happens. The manifestations follow obedience. Watch what happens. The miracle didn't happen. The miracle didn't happen when they spoke out or he spoke. It says, look, they set off and they were healed when? While they were walking along the way. What's God asking you to set off and do? This Bible, simple gospel I'm giving you today. This is simple. 
yet not easy. So when they set off along the way, it says, wow. Wow, they set off and they were healed while walking along the way. And one of them, what was he? A Samaritan, an outsider. When he discovered that he was completely healed, what did he do? He turned back to find Jesus. He, this guy must have been jumping to Pentecost right away. Sounds like a Pente Pentecostal. Hallelujah. He said, shouting out joyous praise and glorifying God. When he found Jesus, he fell down at his feet and thanked him over and over, saying to him, you are the Messiah. Now, I told you, how many, how many started in the story? How many lepers were there? Yeah. All right, so, man, he's jumping. He's praising God. I see Jesus, watch. Where are the other nine? And we don't know if, how many of the other nine were Samaritan. Were Samaritans? We know there were one. No, well, it kind of implies that the other nine were Jews. It's interesting that it wasn't. <laughs> None of the religious people of the time, the people of God, the chosen ones that came back. It was the outsider. The doubly cursed. He wasn't just a leper, he was a Samaritan. Half-breed. Despised by God's people. Because they had intermarried with invaders. He came back. But Jesus asked, hey, where, where are the other nine? Where are they? Adonde están? Where are the other nine? It says, Jesus asked. Weren't there ten who were healed? They all refused to return to give thanks and give glory to God except you. A foreigner from Samaria. Then Jesus said to the healed man lying at feet, arise. It was your faith that brought you salvation and made you whole. Jesus took, it, took him to another level because he came back. Now, I don't know what happened to the other nine. I don't know. They might have just ran and gone see their family, their kids, their grandkids. You know, you don't know. They'd been away for a bit. We don't know. We think they went on their way to go see the, but we don't know that. But what we do know is they didn't come back. That's what we do know. I was sharing with Pastor Joseph the, yesterday morning, who's at the house. He said, maybe the Samaritan didn't have a priest to go to because he was a Samaritan. We don't know. But he w came back to the one he did know. He came back to the one he did know. Oh, and what a good word for us today. Come back to the one you know. No? Come back to the one you know. Don't follow from afar. Stay up close. Stay up close, church. 
Arise and go. It was your faith that brought you salvation. Psalm 107 verses 1 through 3 says, Let everyone give all their praise and thanks to the Lord. And here's why. He's better than anyone could ever imagine. He's always loving and kind. And his faithful love never ends. So go ahead. Let everyone know it. Tell the world how he broke through and delivered you from the power of darkness and has gathered us together from all over the world. He has set us free. Come on, tell somebody. (laughs) He has set us free. That's in the Bible? Yeah, go ahead, open up your Bible to Psalm 107. Mark it down. It says, tell somebody. He has set us free to be his very own. I'm going to ask Joseph to come before I read my final scripture because, I, I, man, I think, I think, man, it's time. People have been calling, following from afar to get up close. I believe that with all my heart. You know who you are. Listen, this is a safe house. A safe house. I'm not here to judge anybody when I hear to point fingers and we're here to love people and to watch Jesus bring people back to life. Time to come back. That's the first call. Second is to come back like the leper did to the one he knew. He didn't need to wander too far. He didn't go that way. No, I didn't come back. To the one who did this for me. The one who cleansed me. Heads bowed. Eyes closed. People praying. You're here this morning. you want to follow Jesus up close and personal you want to you want to know him three calls today we're going to make first one you've never had a relationship with Jesus Christ but you want to give your life to him today if that's you this morning I want you to just look up make eye contact with me and put your heads back down I'm scanning the room real quick Second call. One who uh, need to come back to the one you know. You you've fallen away from God. You you haven't been walking with God. But man, today you want to recommit your life to knowing and loving Him. You want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. You want to come back to Jesus. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Everybody praying. I want you to look up, make eye contact with me and put your heads back down. I'll give you a minute. All right, last call. Everybody look up. I want to see you. I want to look you in the eye.
You need a breakthrough. Your stuff, whether it's a hurt, a habit, a hang up, something painful, an experience, a trauma, a besetting sin, something has you following Jesus from afar. Boy, and when I said that, you knew that's me. That's me. saying I'm that's you, I just want you to stand to your feet right now. Come on. Come on, we're going to resist? Play church? <laughs> I'm done with that. Done with playing church. Done with that. I want you all to come join me. Come on, we're going to close together. Come on, close. You, ain't not, you are not alone. You are not alone. Come. Come on. Come on. Give me Jesus. 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 You can have all this world, but give me Jesus. Sing in the morning. In the morning. In the morning when I rise, 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 give me Jesus, 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 you can have. Church, can I, if you can, I want you to look up here for a minute. I, you know, I've been very candid with you about my experiences with God and my walk with God. I remember, man, struggling so bad with my personal life. It was like 2004. And my life was in shambles. I had experienced so much loss and so much pain, so much disappointment. My life is a mess. And I felt like I can't tell anybody. What are people going to see and think about me? I'm pastoring this great church. I'm the director of this Bible school. I'm like, what are people going to think? What are they going to say if I tell them what's really going on inside of me? It looked like I was following Jesus close, but no, in my heart, I was so far away. And the devil would say, if you tell them, you're going to lose everything. 
You're going to lose everything. Nobody's going to respect you. You're going to lose your church. You're going to lose your Bible school. You're going to lose your reputation. You're going to lose everything. And he was right. I lost everything. But I got back my freedom. I got back my freedom. I got back my life. I didn't have to hide anymore. I didn't have to travel from afar, follow from afar. I didn't have to pretend to be somebody I wasn't. No. I found the power of confession. I'm here today, a free man, not a perfect man, but a free man. And I want us to be free. Christ wants us to be free. He wants us to leave here today. He wants us to leave here like that. Not unclean, but I'm clean, I'm clean, I'm clean, I'm clean. Jesus said, I didn't come into the world to condemn it. No, that was 17 years ago. I didn't think I'd ever make it back. That was the lie of the devil. Man, I'm, and I say this humbly, if it can be said, I'm better than I've ever been. Closer to Jesus than I've ever been. My walk, I've learned, man, to walk in humility and walk in the spirit, to know him, to love him, to allow him to kiss my heart, to know what that feels like, to have a heart kiss with Jesus. You know, you need that we should have a conversation with him. If there's someone you can find that you can talk to, if you can't find them here, find somewhere. That's where my healing came when I learned that scripture in James, confess your faults one to another. You know, just anybody, you find somebody that you could find wholeness. Get the nasty stuff out. Any little piece of leprosy, get it out. Jesus died to make you clean. Ooh, I sense Holy Spirit doing something right now. I want you to lift your hands with me. And you begin to talk to him. Come on. Ora sanda la 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 you're all I need Lord I don't need anybody else. I don't need anything else. I don't need anything. You are all I need, Lord. Oh, Lord, forgive us, God. Now you tell him forgive, to forgive you, and then you might make that a quiet prayer in your heart and mind. You know, you tell him you name that thing by name. You don't need to speak it out, but in your heart and mind, in your mind, that's where the battleground is. You speak it to him. You call him out. He's stopping right now. Just like those lepers. Jesus, heal me. You're all I need, Lord. 
Jesus. Thank you for stopping, Jesus. Thank you for stopping, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. For what you're doing right here, right now. Lord, right now, we're going to say thank you that you've drawn us like only you can, that you've healed us like only you can, that you've cleansed us like only you can, that you've taken that leprosy of sin, you've taken that thing that's held us back, we're not going to follow you from afar from this day forward because of your goodness and because of your grace. Yes, Lord. Give thanks. Let's sing it now. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given. Because He's given. Jesus Christ is Give thanks, church. Give thanks with a grateful heart. With a grateful heart. Give, thanks Give thanks to the Holy One. To the Holy Sing it with me. Give thanks, Give thanks because He's given. Because he's Jesus given. Christ. of what so what the Lord has done for us give thanks give thanks with a grateful heart with a grateful heart give thanks to the to the holy one give thanks give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son Love you, Lord. Come on, let's thank Him from a good place. Holy One, give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ. Let's sing this together. And now, and now, let the weak say I am strong. Weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. The poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done. The Lord. this exhortation from the Apostle Paul found in Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 7. Now grow strong in what you believe just as you were taught. Be more thankful than ever before. Be more thankful than ever before 
be more thankful than ever before. Be more thankful than ever before, church. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. I want you to find at least four or five people. Look them in the eye and say, I'm going to be more thankful than ever before. God bless you.